So first one says, what will be the link between Pulsar and GIF slash Gifford, if any? Um, I think the best way to answer that, and I'll elaborate, I promise, um, but the explanation of what the GIF token is, the Giffordware token is on Deck Screener and on the website, Giffordware.win, both explain it the best. These, <clears throat> this token was created and built upon for one reason and one reason alone to experiment on. Um, I don't feel like there is enough emphasis on really experimenting and proving your points on what you're trying to deliver to the, to the industry. If you can't point to obvious um, case scenarios where it actually works. And one of the, one of the things is, is, you know, everybody comes out with these tokens or they say, uh, I'm going to take a sacrifice or, you know, you got to, you know, uh, plan on this or that. And that is somehow going to deliver some amazing new tech that is going to change every, you know, change the whole crypto realm. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that, but I just feel like there's like a better way to do it. And the way I want to do it is I want to, I want to experiment. I want to prove my points. I'm not just about talking. I'm about proving. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to put in the work. And you might not even know I've been working until it launches, just like with Permagif. This has been in, in production for two months, and I've kept it very close to my chest um, in, in true respect to the people that I've learned from. And uh, I just want to be as upfront and honest as possible. This is an experiment, nothing more. Um, I, I don't advise anybody buy, buys these tokens. I don't advise anybody invests. I don't advise anybody does anything other than speculate. That's all we do in crypto anyways is we speculate. So long story short, uh, there was a particular tokenomic that I was extremely interested in that I kind of, with the help of my team, kind of sussed out, which was permable tokenomics. It took me months to come up with the term terminology for this thing that I believe existed. So this is my opportunity to put this forward and prove my point that this is actually viable. And not only is this viable, this is the hottest thing in crypto in general. And I'm going to prove it by um, essentially showcasing what Permagif can do and what impact it has on the Gifford token in general. So the link is proving the tokenomics. I'm not done. The all, all of the new tokenomics, the, the new kind of idea of rationalizing what is crypto, how does it come into be? Everything we've talked about on Pulsar, that's something I want to test. Obviously, I want to launch Pulsar. I do. And I'm working very hard to get that launched as well. But the link, if any, is that I'm proving points on everything we've talked about on Pulsar, everything we want to we want to build and, and, and launch. I want to I want to showcase on Gifford, Gifford Tech, everything. I want to prove that it's a real thing. What mechanics will be added to these products and systems? Who knows? All I know is that this is a test bed, and I'm going to continue to build testing on this, and I'm going to add, you know, I want to add new, new, new style tokenomics. I want to add new mechanisms. I want to add everything I can to showcase all the theories that we have as a team that we want to bring forward. Right? That's the best I can. That's the best I can put it. Is there a structure that fills up the LP pools? There is no structure on this one. So with Pulsar, that is one of the amazing innovations that we've sussed out um, over the last five, six months is, you know, how do we automate bridging and force LP pools? Uh, currently, between Gifford and Perma Permagif, there is no mechanism for that. Um, I would love to prove that. And I'm very interested in omni-chain transactions currently. And I'm surrounded by devs who literally are writing the books of these sort of things. So 
I'm very interested in it, but there is no promise or expectations along those guidelines. This is, it's kind of a miracle any of this works in the first place. So this is all new territory. Is there a structure that fills up the LP? Oh, yeah, I just talked about that. Um, how will buy, a buy and burn be added? Or B&B, I assume that's buy and burn. Um, the buy and burn exists. And we can talk a little bit more. I, I think maybe the dude, um, or if there's any other devs in the chat, you can ask more specific questions on the smart contracts in, in particular, because there were some very interesting moves we had to make on how all this works. Uh, so if you guys have particular questions, I think it would be better if you just ask those specifics than for me to go on other rants because I'm already, already ranting more than I should. So hopefully that answers that up good. Uh, Mr. Crypto Kool-Aid, is there anything I should add or anything I need to clarify a little bit more on? Into the video, but uh, no, I think you're not ranting. You're hitting all the notes right on the head and explaining it um, surgically, which is why I love you to death because you speak very fluently and uh, can explain it simply. <clears throat> um, I, I think all those notes are individually correct because we're, we we don't teach people. I've said it from Hexco for the last four years. We tell people why, not what to buy, and that's why the air quote term experiment is. Correct. But what it is, is the same thing that we are building infrastructure on the Pulsar side, right? Pulsar is an infrastructure pass. Gifford is a builder pass. Exterm or ex experiment and or um, speculate all you want. But for us, these are bedrock components on the things that we highly value and would, would, would like to see. Um, and also has the same paradigms like uh, the dude pop back up if you're uh, still there. Um, we want people building not just on our ideals, but those mindsets uh, together as a unit and as a phalanx, um, we win. Uh, DeFi for all is about evolving together as a unit, not us or them. So, um, yeah, anyone else with uh, ideas? I think Connor had a question and I'm trying to figure out if my camera isn't working <laughs> yet or where the chat is. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll just add uh, one one disclaimer. Um, the most obvious problem right now is because, <laughs> yeah, first of all, we're all extremely early in this. Whether it's an experiment that's going to fail or it's going to just, like, be amazing, um, we're extremely early. And I am working on the front end um, immediately after I get off this chat. And we're going to get that put up so that you all can burn GIF um, in order to mint the permagif. So that is in the, in the routes, but the, uh, the permagif contract and the gift contract are both verified on scan.pulsechain.com. So you are able to interact with the smart contract directly. So if anybody has any particular questions on that, please ask. With that being said, uh, good buddy of mine and ally is Mr. Kinetics and he was posting some amazing notes earlier on. I was hoping if you wouldn't mind um, just saying a few words on that, Mr. Kinetics. Yeah. An admin and um, be best. You're breaking up a bit, bud. Okay. How about now? Now you're good. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, there's uh, there, those notes that are in there since I'm not an admin maybe it'd be helpful to pin those up. Um, I I don't know if I'm going to get around to doing like a PDF version of a walkthrough on it, but once you've done it once, it's actually very, very simple. You just have to understand that um, you, just the, a few simple steps, like approving the original GIF for an um, approve amount, and then going back to the new contract and putting in the amount, and then making sure you hit the the times 10 to the 18th power button because that's how the blockchain reads it in GUI. And then putting that same number in there that you put in initially plus an extra zero for the actual pulse chain fee. Um, so if that can be pinned, that would be great. That might be helpful to some people until that UI is up for them to be able to easier do that. But 
Um, I kind of like that there's not a front end right now because very few of you are actually trying to mint this thing and too many of you are trying to buy. Like we're above the ceiling price right now on this token. And I'm okay with that. So you guys can go ahead and continue buying that if you like to do so. Well, I mean, that's an interesting um, point of reference. Like we are telling you, don't buy PGIF right now. If you already listen no. to the Icasa healing ceiling, well, I mean, you are, but like, you, no. you know, at the no. end of the day, we're trying to teach well, I'm you. I'm joking. Well, I'm joking. I, I, I want I, everyone to learn just as you yeah, saying yeah. crypto Kool-Aid, like that it, this is an education thing. Like right. you guys should really indelve yourselves into those instructions and just learn how to write from the blockchain for future reference on future projects. Uh, I think you'll find it incredibly useful whenever a UI goes down, knowing how to interact with the smart contract. Yep, I'll 100%. That 100%. Hey, it's the dude. You're back. What's going on, man? Ask some questions. I'm excited to get you to actually talk to a Gifford for the first time. Yeah, my, I guess, initial question is, I, I kind of scanned through PGIF and GIF, and I guess I understand that, but the, the buy and burn, uh, the first thing I notice is it's, uh, it's saying it's a proxy contract, so I'm kind of curious uh, what made you... Uh, I guess I don't fully understand why you would want to do that. Um, could you explain why you went with that? Yeah, absolutely. So the main reason why it's a proxy contract is to essentially make it upgradable. So we initially, we wanted to um, really push the envelope and utilize, and you may or may not be familiar with this, um, Mr. Dude, but uh there is a prominent um, member of the Pulse Chain community. His name is KG, or brother KG, as some some people know him. And he um, he's the founder of a Pulse Chain centric um, wallet, crypto wallet known as Internet Money. And uh, he's got an in wallet swap that actually aggregates on top of aggregators. So it, it could use. Um, you know, Pateus, or it could use the balancer fork for, uh, you know, particularly, uh, you know, uh, you know, trading large volumes between two different uh, um, uh, stable coins to get best uh, order execution. And in the process, it actually burns one of the tokens that really brought a lot of us hexagons together in the first place, known as hex. It, it, it uses a part of the fee to, to buy and burn hex. So I really wanted to use the internet money um, aggregator or or the router um, so that we can kind of just be a positive member of the community. And I'm not completely um, giving up yet, but uh, early this morning, as we were thought we were really good on utilizing that, that swapping route for the buy and burn, it, it was failing um, repetitively and we just could not figure out a fix for it. So we chose as a team to kind of move forward um, without using the internet money router system and use the uh, Pateus directly. So the only way you could really do that effectively, at least in our dev environment, is we have to use a proxy contract so that there is a, the proxy is, is actually running the, uh, a lot of the scripts that, that, that reinforce the buy and burn. So that's that's the primary reason for it. And, you know, by doing so, when you run an aggregator, you're, you're essentially hitting an API for a price quote. And I, and I promise I won't get too technical on this. But um, to answer the dude's question as best as I can for now, when you do that, you get this APL, API call back. And that is like the quote, the price quote, when you go into to, to initiate the swap for the buy and burn. And essentially the problem is, is that somebody can actually enforce a replay attack on you and drain the buy and burn and just keep replaying the transaction. So we had to in, uh, initiate our own uh, nonce technology, which as you know, in, in all wallet transactions, there's a nonce and that is, is protecting your general wallet from replay attacks. So we had to initiate that into our buy and burn. So I feel like I went way into the weeds on that. But um, this is a, you know, like I've been saying, this is an experimental ecosystem. Gifford Tech is experimental 110%. So there is no ethos that we're really trying to stay within the rails on. 
we're doing our best to do what's right, but the only way we could innovate in this scenario was by using a proxy contract, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I see what you're saying. Uh, that's definitely a drawback in my eyes. Um, just that's really what drew me into crypto is the immutability part of things. Um, but I, I understand what you're saying and uh, it is what it is. And sadly, I'd say 99% of the people don't even know what a proxy contract is and therefore <laughs> don't give two shits about it. So, but I guess, so I, I wasn't able to scan the code uh, because of, so, so I, so you're, it's a aggregator. So this is, how, can you explain just like the simple, like flow of how the buy and burn works? Sorry, my cats are loud. Just like a like it, it's it's directing only with uh, permagif. Oh, like on the specific like the the routes, like what's happening within the route? Is that what you're asking? No, I guess like what's going into the buy and burn. Uh, I guess PLS is going into that, and then it's buying and burning pgif. Is that what what's happening? Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah the routing so. So yeah, that's uh, what is happening is is during the minting process of the permagift token, um, a user must essentially burn Gifford or the gift token and pay a protocol fee in the process. And that protocol fee is then being earmarked for this buy and burn, which when run will actually run through an aggregator. So here's the big thing. I completely respect um, your thoughts on that, like using a proxy contract. And, you know, honestly, in the past, early in crypto, for as long as I've been around, proxy, proxy contracts have been kind of the enemy in a lot of ways because they, they're they able to be used in a lot of nefarious ways. So I completely respect your opinion on that. The thing that I find the most interesting, though, is like, is it possible to actually automate a buy and burn that's a publicly publicly callable function that aggregates across multiple DEXs to to give you the best order execution? And I think you of all people will understand how an ecosystem can drive the creation of LP pools in a specific way and almost like shun everybody who's like who wants to make different LP pools or builders who wants to do different things and that sort of thing. And you cannot control where LP pools are made, the the amount that is put in LP pools, or how people will trade their tokens. This is all uncontrollable factors. And anybody who tries to pretend that you can control this all in one ecosystem is just living a pipe dream. Straight up. So how do you build a buy and burn that is not calling one particular pool? This is how you do it. This is the innovation. So we do have to kind of like take a concession and say, yo, like I don't really like proxy contracts at all because I've had terrible experiences with them. But also it allows for innovation and the proxy owner can renounce ownership at any given time. So that should be known and noted that there is a path towards decentralization, but you cannot rightfully test and prove that all the funds that are be moving to a buy and burn contract that's using that's using a buy and burn in this innovative way without risking the the the, the inevitable fact that you could be pumping a contract full of a ton of native tokens. They can never be used if the proxy con if if the buy and burn fails. So the only way to protect those funds of user funds that are that are earmarked to buy and burn the token is to use a proxy contract. There is no other way that I'm aware of. So this is that this is why you know the whole ecosystem is built on straight up. We are testing things and we're we're using we have reasons why we use certain mechanisms and it's to innovate. Because if you're not innovating in crypto, then you're basically just waiting to be not important, essentially irrelevant.
So this is the this is the reason why we're moving in this direction. And sorry, I was ranting again. So feel free to jump in and ask any more questions or or give me any more of your your feelings or thoughts. And uh, one uh, one but my, one pen to just go ahead go, go ahead, dude. Uh, my first thought is it's it's a lot easier. Like, and I'm not trying to harp ride your ass. I'm just being open and honest. But my first thought was it's easy for you as the developer to feel comfortable with a proxy because you yourself know you're not going to rug, you know, or you're not going to be uh, sliding off a little percentage of all these funds into your own personal wallet, you know, or just anything like that. And my also second thoughts were like, um, it doesn't have to be the only buy and burn, right? Like you could still point the gift, gif token to like a v2 option you know kind of like how jake's had his v1 and v2 buy and burn you know and it's redesigned and they each have their own uh funds um that's something that um might might interest you i don't know i i still i totally understand what you're saying again with like this is very innovative and uh would be ridiculously hard to write a smart contract for but I do know, like, you can get price, you can query these DEXs, right, and get the price of different LPs. And I don't know, it might be too gas intensive to do. I, I, I don't know. I, that's that's definitely the limits of my developing skills. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to begin to design an aggregator smart contract. Um, but just, uh, yeah, just my initial thoughts. So one thing that before I give responds is um I want to take a note that uh, those of us that are hexagons know the whole admin key free ideology. And ideally that's also a blanket term for not understanding that sometimes things need to be upgraded in game dev land. We now have something called a day one patch. So that means we have to go through so much silly shit just to get it through certification. So it works good enough. And then by the time the discs are, minted they're mailed out the wrappers are done people buy them and it's off the shelf you put your little disc in the first thing it's going to say is update so before when you need real-time stuff to see it in real time so that way you don't have a whoopsie moment um, that is really the difference in our ideals on when renouncing would happen anyway uh please go ahead and respond Keith. Uh, yeah uh i think the the hardest thing to get over and I, and I hear you about uh, Jake's V2, but just to be clear, um, th th he's not pulling from a new source. So it's actually irrelevant uh, what he does with the V2. It, it's just sourcing a new pool for where all the ETH goes. Um, but to answer your question in more general, at least the way I would like to answer it, or or just like your general thoughts, because I, res I respect your thoughts and everything and your feelings on it. Um, the DEX aggregators are upgradable aggregators. So what, what I mean by that is if Pateus or Internet Money or whichever aggregator we use, if there is a critical bug in that aggregator and they have to upgrade their versions, um, all of the, in our case, Pulse tokens, the native tokens, would go into an address they could never be retrievable. So the biggest reason, and this is, comes from the devs who built these aggregators. I spoke one-on-one -on -one with multiple of them. I'm doing business with one of them. You cannot relay um, a price quote through an aggregator without making it upgradable. It's just the technology is just not there yet. I hope that it does come true and that we, we get that kind of tech. But if, if there's something wrong with their aggregator and they have to upgrade from V2 to V3 or whatever the case may be, uh, then we're left in the water. Like overnight, all of the funds, all the value of everything we built basically goes to zero. And that was just a risk that I was not willing to take. And so yeah. this is another no, one of those reasons why you gotta, you gotta, You've got to take it on the chin when you innovate and realize that, that people may not be comfortable with the way you do it. 
I, I, yeah, again, I totally understand. Um, and I guess the, the only other thing you could really do that would, uh, make everything better would just to have some kind of DAO, um, in a multi-signature wallet that has owner keys. Um, that, that would definitely make a lot of things easier. Cause to me, that's how, like, I'm, I, that's how I look at Helios. Like, we're allowed to have, um, additional knobs and, and features that you couldn't normally have, uh, because we have a DAO and people can trust that it's not, you know, I'm not just another Jake just turning knobs all willy nilly, you know, to whatever, whatever suits him best, you know. Amen to that, by the way, bro. And I, I, I second and third that uh, point. Um, and we internally, I mean, Kinetic Skipper and I have been poking at stuff for years now behind the scenes. We, we believe in that mythos mentality. So tip of the hat, and we 1,000% agree. The ship needs to be driven correctly, not just the tech be built correctly. Do you guys have any plans on that? Um, you know, like I, it, like for me, I would like to have nine plus DAO members, but obviously you can't just find them at front. You know, it's a slow process. It started with me launching and having all the keys. And then now I've distributed three keys to three other individuals. And then as I go, it'll, it'll increase in size. Like, do you guys have any, like, is this where y'all are trying to take it or what is y'all's like future with GIF and Pulsar? Well, let me ask you this real quick. Uh, you're talking about an Ethereum where you have Gnosis safe and you can do multi stakes, right? Oh uh, yeah. I, I guess I'm a noob to pulse pulse chain. So I guess, uh, <laughs> lay it down on me. That's not an option on pulse chain. Gnosis safe is not compatible with pulse chain yeah. currently. But you bet your bottom dollar, I am attempting to raise funds to build a dev team that is capable of bringing it to Pulse Chain, but currently is not available. That sucks. Uh, so I guess what what brings you guys, y'all are Hex, I'm new to uh, Pulse Chain and Hex, so uh, I'd, any additional backstory on that would, to help me understand the allure to Pulse Chain would be awesome as well. Well, let's make it quick because there's there's a bunch of questions that I still want to talk about. On yeah, I'm I'm getting way sidetracked. Just ignore that and uh, let's move on. My bad. <laughs> One second, dude. No, we we would love to actually talk with you deeper about this. I mean, you and I have been ping ponging behind the scenes since you launched. I mean, <laughs> about a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, not only do we love the value of this conversation. We love builders that actually have foresight. So um, don't don't think that just because we have other things to pop around on, that's not a very good point, and we'd love to talk to you more. Cool, man. I'm going to step away for a sec, so uh, go ahead and uh, pop more questions in, guys. I got a question, if you guys are taking them. Please, go ahead. What's, what was the, what's the point of going from the gift token to the P gift token? Um, I mean, it's one-to-one, -one, burnable, I get that, but what's the difference here? Why would somebody with the gift token want to change over to the P gift token? My goodness, Connor, you just asked the best question of the day. Um, yeah. This is the dilemma that we're trying to suss out here is I've been using that word a lot today, suss out. Um, the idea is, is you've got the gift token who has, you know, was all pre-minted one billion total and you cannot create anymore. So the real idea of the experiment is with, with Pulsar, for example, what we were building with Pulsar is that, Titan X is a big part of Pulsar. That is going to be the other half of what is required to mint Pulsar, just like GIF is required to mint PermaGIF. 
So the big difference between the two is anything that's minted from Titan X can hold the title of uh, fair launch token. If it if it's derived from Titan X, it's fair launch. Um, anybody with a little bit of ETH and some time to wait can mine your Titan X, right? So that makes a fair launch. The opposite end of the spectrum is a centralized launch. And the interesting part about that is that it does have a tendency to really be able to pump in value in general, like just generally speaking. So if we took a token that was essentially entirely 100% open Zeppelin um, copy paste and just created this generic token with a set supply. But now we're able to send some of that supply to the debt address. Like how will that impact the overall value or the overall supply in terms of, uh, you know, your supply versus demand sort of, sort of mechanics. So that was kind of the main reason we wanted to see how that would really play out. Now, which, which token is better holding? That's the real question. That's, I want, I'm more interested to hear what all your guys' ideas are because you have a scenario where you have a token that is now deflationary and will only be deflationary versus a token that you can mint and is reinforced by the highest buy and burn in any ecosystem. Um, it takes a substantial amount of PLS, at least in current market term conditions, to mint Permagif, and the vast majority of that, 90% to be exact, is going to be earmarked for the buy and burn, which will then be used with an aggregator to make it even more efficient to reinforce its, its value long term. So it's a situation where you've got one asset that is deflationary, that is needed to drive the ecosystem forward, and on the other hand, you have the new token that is the first ever token created from creation, not inflation, that is tied to a perma bull tokenomic of where you take a, uh, a uh, you take a protocol fee in, and the majority of that to that protocol fee is used to buy and burn the token you just minted, which means. You cannot mint or arbitrage in a way that hurts the ecosystem. If you mint, you're permanently bullish. If you arbitrage just to make a few a few dollars because it's above the uh, ceiling price, you're permanent bullish. That economic energy goes into perma bull or uh, perma perma gift and can never be removed. So you've got two ends of a spectrum here that are both very, very interesting to see how it kind of plays out. So. I'm sorry I couldn't answer your question directly, but it was a fantastic question. I'm more interested to hear what everybody else thinks. Is the fee per GIF uh, modifiable? Oh, that is permanent. So that is another part of the experiment. We're going to see how it plays out. So with it being 10 PLS per GIF uh, that you send in to uh, burn in order to mint the, the PGIF, um, that is permanent. That cannot be changed. So that being said, it is very much tied to the value of PLS as a token in its whole. And this is separate. How, how does this link to Pulsar? These tokens you're gonna build so yeah sorry uh, I jumped in there too soon uh, these tokenomics are the same tokenomics we're using in pulsar the only difference is really permagif is coming from a more centralized ownership perspective where you have a limited supply and pulsar is coming from more of a free launch or fair launch kind of narrative or ecosystem where, you know, you can use a fair launch token in order to mint. Um, but these are tokenomics that we're going to be using in, in Pulsar as well. We're just here to try to prove its value currently. Right. So you'll have a perma Pulsar 
token? No, actually, Pulsar is the perma token. And Gith is like the tight next token in this scenario. Gotcha. Gotcha. Furthermore, one other point is, um, you know, I write a lot about people that use the term game theory. Well, theory doesn't actually give you expectations. Uh, execution does. And that's why, again, this is, air quote, an experimental tech that we're doing in real time live to make sure that the things that we bootstrap and build on Pulsar actually work. Don't have a, a weird uh, T-rank inflation bug or any of those other things that happen in real time. Um, and believe me, Gifford is anal about actually cutting all the fat and checking all the boxes to make sure that just even the user experience from gas swaps to hops is taken care of. And we'd rather develop something that executes flawlessly rather than not. And how else do you do that rather than either sticking it in hard hat or doing it in real time on live chain? Um, so again, Gifford Tech is the fulcrum for us understanding and building what we're, we're utilizing and wrapping into the entire Pulsar ecosystem moving forward. Mr. Maximus J, are you available? I must have caught him busy. I just wanted to put him on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> You're always there's my boy. There's my boy. What's happening, guys? What's up? We just wanted to hear your voice and throw around some some thoughts or questions or whatever you want to talk about. I know uh, even with the people closest to us, they were all kind of shocked about the uh, the launch of, of Permit <laughs> Gift today. So whatever you want to vent about or <laughs> ask questions about, whatever, man, you're golden around here. No, no, no. I, I had no idea that this launched already. I was like, yo, what the fuck? Um yeah, so uh, I didn't realize that that was that was done, and so yeah, just catching up, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to remember what you told me before about how it all operated. So a little bit of history, uh, Mr. Maximus J, Kinetics, and I were all in the um, his trading group back in 2017 during the uh, crazy Ponzi days, and I remember uh, his group was trading people had to trade bread. Um, but back when we had Ether Delta and all of those fun, fun things. So Mr. Maximus J is a, a very old hat. And, and funny enough, we all just came together at a clockwork six plus years later. <laughs> yeah, funny how that works. Hey, um, I'm excited for this. And, you know, again, calling it an experiment because I don't really know what else you would call it. But, um, yeah, I just feel like innovation like this is necessary, especially right now to where it just seems like things in crypto are going more towards traditional banking um, directions. You know, everything's kind of getting bunched up and, um, you know, teams are being created and things like that. And uh, yeah, it just seems like when that starts to happen, the innovation has already kind of stopped. And there are some chains, some teams that have already kind of stopped innovating. And I don't think that was really the point of crypto, personally. So I'm excited to be on this end of it where kind of pushing the envelope, see what's possible to hopefully lead to a place where, I don't know, better financial products exist. If that's really what we're going for, something like that, I think. Yeah, I think experimenting in real time is absolutely necessary. Um, again, I always go back to my pedigree of um, Arcane, uh, which is systemic sandwiched or uh, what I call accordion game theory. If you want to use game theory as a term, he's accordion. Um, because that's multiple systems built on each other. And the only thing you can do is speculate at that time because it's a real-time uh, biome that has to react in real time. And you never know what's going to happen with that stuff. But the question is, how do you say yes to the player um, when those things exist? And that inherently is the interesting thing, what you just you know hit on the head of people stop innovating because it's hard versus uh, what is easy 
And we are the type of people, all of us on core, um, you know, Jay Gold, uh, Crypto Dev Business, uh, my dear friend, um, uh, all of us that want to come work with us to try to build something that actually has legs to evolve, not become static because challenges are hard. Yeah, I think I think that's really the more important thing is like people should be paying attention to, especially a team like this, is what we're doing. Um, just pay attention to what we're doing. And like if you really want to get ahead, just start taking the things that are working and then grouping those all together in your own thing. If like you're a developer or, you know, you want to come go and do your own thing is because like that's where the goal is, is trying to figure out like what are the bits and pieces of Hex that worked? What are the bits and pieces of Titan X that worked of what we're doing here? And you just got to keep um, iterating until you find like the best of everything and you keep launching those types of chains or, or products, let's call them out there um, and see like what you get, you know? A hundred. And it's not about copying something. It's about digesting it. It's about bringing the spirit of the pose for those that are artists that did figure all the rest, which I horrible at. Um, but the gesture, the spirit of the pose is what you want to um, have as a full fulcrum and forefront on when you develop base. And as I called forever, run free simulations on, you should always build on the bones of giants. Why not? You know, one wheel is worth nothing. Two wheels is a sled. When you get four wheels, now you have a car or cart or something that's usable with wheels. But you don't get there from the beginning. So that means you have to be nimble uh, moving forward. And with this uh, archetype that we have from carrier pigeon maximalism, fax machine maximalism to now high speed internet and or DeFi for all, we have to be nimble in how we create and set the precedence, if you will, on what we're trying to do or what should be done in a free market, um, decentralized community, right? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. We're kind of living through a golden age, and I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's like we can create our own money for the first time that we know of in history. I mean, maybe it existed before, but that history is gone. So we have no clue when and where that might have occurred in the past. But right now we do. <laughs> and so it's like, I don't know. It's, I personally think stuff like this is fun. And um, if you're not having fun with it, then you should do something else because uh, – yeah, like we're we're on the uh, cusp of something amazing here with just uh, crypto in general, you know? You know, the, the epoch of time is crazy between um, DeFi for all, AI, everything that's happening right now, um, income inequality. It's a very interesting golden age as you hit it right on the head. Yeah, I'll have to say for sure, uh, my girl has to rip me away from the laptop on a daily basis because I'm so enthralled by this entire space. And I, I 100% agree that this is absolutely the future. Like, there's no avoiding it. Like once the UI is there and normies come in, like it's it's here for sure. No doubt. Uh, quick always another question. Go ahead. No, no. I was, I was saying always remember rule number one. Uh, make sure the wifey's happy. So when your when your girlfriend rips you away, that's actually a good breathing point. You should take those. But anyway, please please go ahead, sir. Uh, how does the <laughs> I, I I do oblige for the most part. Um, but how so? How does the buy and burn get called? Is it like a public function or like is this an owner function? Like how is it automated? What's the rates on it? That kind of thing. So it's a, it's a public function. However, you would have to write your own script to run it without our front end. So it's a little complicated using the aggregator, but uh, we it obviously will be a, a publicly callable function with all the scripting needed um, on our front end when it goes live, hopefully here in a couple of days. So like, uh, and then you guys set the, like a burn cap and a, uh, frequency rate, I guess, like a normal, like, like our buy and burns. So it's actually really interesting. So when you call a quote to an aggregator, you can't just like set a maximum. You have to set a specific amount. Um, otherwise the quote doesn't know what to return for you. So the way it's set up is very much, very similar to what you're used to, right? With your, um, I believe, Fairly similar with your protocol, if not more, more similar with uh, Titan X 
where there is a uh, a settings function that you can call um, that the owner of the buy and burn contract can call, I should say, and it would set the amount of the quote and the frequency as well as uh, you know um, slippage tolerance if you, if you want to change that if that answers your question it's very similar to what you're used to yeah it's definitely what i was looking for what's um your your strategy on it like uh, i'm curious you know like jake basically cranks it through the roof to create this roi and i know this is different because you guys aren't mining or anything but um he has it super high and then cranks it super low and basically lets the charts, you know, green, massive green candles, massive red candles. Uh, no doubt he's going to do it again and just print massive green candles when the time's right. Like, are you guys going to like, do you guys want to go with that or like more like uh, just like a set flat rate that's like slow and low type of thing? Uh, do you have any ideas on how you want to run it? Absolutely. But first off, I just want to point out, I don't know how you did not just get excited when you said, I understand that your token doesn't inflate. <laughs> how did you not get excited about that idea? <laughs> I'm a holder. Okay. I'm a holder. <laughs> uh, well, well, the, and here's the difference is the dude has been part of what happens when you have a drunken madman that doesn't understand the importance of ballasts and levies versus actually turning them correctly willy-nilly and um you know dude and i've had to be behind the scenes many times on stuff and things but yeah that's it's exciting because we have you that came from the experience of building on tight nets and we're all kind of you know hushing together and and figuring things out but yeah i, I love that point of the question um but go ahead and answer it Gif yeah so I think it would be best to first understand where I come from on the whole buy and burn on Titan X. I was, as I read through the white paper um, before the launch, it was very much my understanding that there was zero expectations of the buy and burn. I made my moves with Titan X based on zero expectations. So that differs a lot from the way the community ended up turning out, in my opinion. I don't think there should ever be any expectation on that. And if you do put expectation on that, it's probably because you made your moves wrong. You made it incorrectly. And it's hard to admit that you made a mistake in that, in that respect, and I understand that. But in general, there should be no expectation. The idea of the buy and burn is that it's earmarked for only buy and burn. And I can vouch for the fact that even though we have a buy and burn contract that is proxied, there is no method within the contract to upgrade the contract, to allow for withdrawals or do anything nefarious. It literally can only be used to be called within the aggregating function. So that's what it's earmarked for. So if you have something that's earmarked for only one method alone, there is particularly no reason to sit there and allow the token that it's designed to buy and burn to essentially die. And there's only a nefarious reason to run it nonstop 24 seven in order to pay people off. Right. I think the general strategy, and I can only speak generally speaking of any buy and burn should only be to keep, the balance of the value of the token intact. So in the case of our specific situation where we have a token that is created through, well, it's created. It's not inflated through, um, you know, purchasing a miner and waiting time and getting different bonuses based on when you got in and that sort of a deal. It's not based on that at all. It's, it's actually created. What that means is it's very difficult to dump the price. Very difficult. Like nobody's like gaming the system. You have to put in real value to make the token come into existence. And then on top of that, like how many people want to bring it into existence and then dump for a loss and then do it over and over and over again like you're addicted to losing money. Like that's just not how it works out in this ecosystem. So really and generally what I'm trying to say is 
all you really want to do when you have a price ceiling is to keep it relatively competitive to the price ceiling. And that's the overall general strategy. 